The human race is growing in number every day. But at the same time we're building up into the skies to accommodate our ever-growing population, we're also digging deeper into the ground to find out more about the people and places who came before us. Barely a day goes by without somebody finding something that sheds new light on how our ancestors used to live. And we're very happy to be able to bring you some great recent discoveries in this video. Building an artificial island sounds like a major construction project. Creating a piece of land where none existed beforehand sounds like the kind of task that should require the very latest modern technology. But in reality, our ancestors were capable of the job thousands of years ago. Thanks to a recent study in Scotland, we now know that it was happening even longer ago than we thought. The Cranigs, a series of tiny rocky islands made from boulders off the Scottish coast, had long been thought to be the creation of Iron Age builders around 2800 years ago. Radiocarbon dating now has proven that they're closer to 5600 years old and must have been put there by Neolithic people. Fragments of Neolithic pottery discovered by divers swimming below the islands has confirmed the finding. At only 30 feet across, each artificial island is tiny but the intricacy of the construction is incredible for the time they were built. Some even have stone causeways to connect them to the mainland. When British soldiers burned the port of Brunswick Town in North Carolina to the ground in 1776, they destroyed a lot of American history with it. But they didn't manage to erase the traces of the past completely. Earlier in 2019, archaeologists uncovered the remains of an old colonial building and it appears that it may have had quite a colorful history. A student using ground-penetrating radar found a 400-square-foot building five feet below the land and alerted his senior colleagues. Now that it's been excavated, it's giving up the secrets of days gone by, because items like tobacco pipes, liquor bottles, goblets, and wine barrels were found in the old building's crawlspace, experts believe that this was once a thriving tavern and it may even have been a brothel. Straight pins, fasteners, and thimbles certainly indicate there were once many women here. Helpfully, an Irish halfpenny minted in 1766 has provided a rough date for the archaeologists, who say that the find is a time capsule from the America of the 1700s. The ancient Mayans had a special affinity for jade stone, using it as a construction tool for many of the items that the rest of the world made out of either stone or steel. That makes Mayan tools easy to identify when they're found. But nobody was expecting one to turn up in a salt mine. In our culture, there are some materials, like diamonds, which are reserved for decorative jewelry, and other materials, like iron, which are primarily reserved for construction. The Mayans had no such interest in grouping their materials. It was jade for jewelry, jade for ornaments, and jade for hand tools. A team from Louisiana State University of the USA found the gouge tool in what was once a Mayan salt works in Belize. Amazingly, it still had a handle attached. Crafted from rosewood from Honduras, it's becoming increasingly apparent that the Maya relationship with jade was more utilitarian than we once thought. Previously, we believed they only used it for rituals and ceremonies. Apparently, this wise old civilization was a little less precious than we are today. If the Mayans were still alive today, they'd probably be filing a huge lawsuit against DC Comics for plagiarism and copyright infringement. Take one look at this and tell us it's not Batman's outfit. The caped crusader looks to have been inspired by the design of Kamazots, a Mayan god with the body of a man and the head of a bat, right down to having a mask covering his face and pointy ears. The famous Mayan Codex describes him as using one hand to hold his knife and the other to seize his victim. Maybe he was avenging the death of his parents. In fairness, we must point out that the designer of this outfit was aware of both Batman and Kamazots. It's the work of designer Christian Pacheco, who was invited to reimagine Batman on the Dark Knight's 75th anniversary in 2014. Still though, all he did was copy the design that was laid out by the Mayans. Pacheco no longer knows where the mask is, it was sold to a private collector. We wonder if it was a Mr. B. Wayne. If there's one person in the whole world you probably wouldn't associate with worshipping Satan, 
It's the Queen of England. Not least because she's also the head of the Church of England, which tends not to be on the devil's side. Despite that, some very satanic artifacts recently turned up in Holywood Park, a Scottish estate owned by the Queen. The chilling discoveries include a concrete altar and a plaque made of metal depicting a horned beast and a terrified woman inside a pentagram. The design appears to be pagan. Even more chillingly, they vanished soon after they were discovered, and before anyone could investigate them further. The UK Pagan Council, which exists, said that pagans wouldn't normally use a concrete altar in ceremonies because pagans prefer to use natural materials like stone or wood. It's doubtful the Queen would know anything about what they were or why they were there, but perhaps she should have a look through her family tree to see if any of her relatives dabbled with the occult. Finding something that appears to be made out of the wrong material is always fascinating to scientists. Pagans don't usually use concrete, and Romans didn't often make sarcophagi out of lead. But we now have evidence that it happened occasionally. A team performing what they expected to be a routine check below a building in Granada, Spain, were lost for words when they found the ancient Roman coffin there waiting for them. The discovery happened close to the Granada Cathedral, where construction work was being performed on the Via Mena building. It was known that the building stood on top of a previous 14th century construction site, but now it seems the 14th century construction may have been built on something even older. The sarcophagus was 12 feet below the surface and dates back to around the year 300. Lead would have been an expensive material to have someone buried in, so whoever was inside must have been rich, important, or both. It's not yet opened, and nor has anyone confirmed they eventually intend to open it. By removing the sandstone and clay which currently coats it, it's hoped that an inscription will be revealed, which could help identify the occupant. Uncovering an ancient well that hadn't been seen by human eyes for more than two centuries was more than enough to persuade archaeologists to take a trip to Scotland. Finding out that the well contained far more than just old rocks and water was just a cherry on the cake. The old well at Mither Tap Hilfert was referred to in many ancient texts and was covered over at least two centuries ago. But when it was uncovered again, it was evidently far older than 200 years. It's thought the hilltop was first occupied 3,000 years ago and the well may go back as long as civilization in the area does. It's a deep water well built using blocks of granite and surrounded by standing stones, which suggest a ceremonial use. Given that the well is far older than anyone anticipated, it's now hoped that it may shed further light on the ancient Roman settlement which is known to have existed here, which housed two entire legions. There are some discoveries which lead to more questions than they do answers. Historians and archaeologists thought they had the full history of Ireland fairly well worked out until a recent find in Sligo put a huge question mark over the accepted narrative of events in the region. Archaeologists were excavating an existing series of prehistoric monuments in the Carrowmore region when they uncovered a megalith that doesn't fit or match with anything previously found in the Emerald Isle. Carrowmore is already one of the most important parts of Ireland for archaeology, playing host to a series of tombs which are over 5,000 years old. Initially, the team thought they were working inside a barrow, but they now know it isn't a barrow at all. They just can't find the right words to describe what they found. It can best be described as a circular ditch around a raised platform upon which sat a thick layer of stone, carved into the circle to match the ditch. Below the stone, the soil is full of charcoal. Something was burned here, and something was placed upon that platform. But what could it be? For all the exciting discoveries that archaeologists make, it's often still gold coins which are valued at the highest price. And so it proved to be the case for a lucky amateur detectorist in Britain recently. A 30-year-old armed with nothing more than a basic metal detector found a coin made of 24-karat gold in Dover, Kent while searching a field which had been recently plowed. Finding a gold coin is lucky, but finding this particular gold coin was like winning the lottery. It's one of only 24 Roman Aris coins with the face of Roman finance minister Electus stamped on them ever discovered, and it's 1,700 years old. 
Electus was especially notable for trying to annex Britain away from the Roman Empire. As some in the country now say, he was the first Brexiteer. The auction house, which handled the sale of the coin, expected it to fetch somewhere around $125,000. When all was said and done, it was bought for an incredible $700,000, making it the most valuable Roman coin mined in Britain ever to be sold. The man who found the coin in England may have been an amateur, but he was at least looking for treasure. The farmer who found one of the most incredible burial discoveries in Russian history was just tending to his ground when he stumbled across it. Rustam Mudyev, who owns a farm in Nikoska Astrakhan, was toiling in his field when his spade struck a bronze pot. He took it to a museum. The museum called in professional archaeologists and then other ancient treasure after ancient treasure was found in the ground. Expert diggers found a rich burial ground at least 2,000 years old and containing the remains of what's believed to have been a nomadic king of the Sarmatan people, who lived from 500 BC to 400 AD before being wiped out by Romans and Huns. Further bodies found around the king may have been his family, and the gold jewelry with its turquoise inserts denotes their wealth. The king was still wearing the remnants of his gold-leafed cape when he was found. Astrakhan's regional governor, Sergei Morozov, hopes the site has more to tell historians about what life was like in the area two millennia ago. Thanks to movies like Jurassic Park, we like to think that we know what dinosaurs look like. But we could all be wrong. The standard depiction of a dinosaur is the best guess of scientists. We can't say for sure whether they had feathers or not. Now we're finding new dinosaur skeletons which make us look at them in a whole new light. Because a newly discovered species of the giant lizard seems to have had tailbones shaped like hearts. The new dinosaur has been given the catchy name of Mainamawamtuka Moyawamking, which is taken from the Swahili for tail made of hearts. It's an offshoot of a titanosaur and has been found under cliffs in Tanzania. The new and slightly cute bones are seen as a crucial part of the jigsaw when it comes to discovering more about titanosaurs, of which very little is known other than the fact that they were huge. As an estimate, the dinosaur this skeleton belonged to would have weighed approximately 76 tons. Everybody knows who Christopher Columbus is, but fewer people are familiar with his illegitimate son, Hernando Colon. Which is a shame, because during his lifetime in the 16th century, Cologne tried to create the largest library in the world. Cologne accumulated over 16,000 books, barely a quarter of which still survive. The remainder were thought completely lost to time until now. The discovery of the Libro de los Epitomes in Copenhagen hasn't given us any of the books back, but it has given us a hint of the old world literature which is now completely lost to our world. The 500-year-old find is a catalog intended as a guide to Cologne's library. The index had long since been thought lost, but was discovered among a collection of Arne Magnusson, who donated all of his books to the University of Copenhagen after his death in 1730. Nobody noticed the Libro de los Epitomes at the time, and so it's been gathering dust on a shelf ever since. The manuscript is now being digitized slowly and carefully in the hope that it will be available to readers everywhere in the world by 2020. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.